and I welcome you all to Mahasa University eTalk series. Today, uh, we have Dr. Suhail with us. Uh, Dr. Suhail uh, is from uh, Faculty of Pharmacy, Mahasa University, Malaysia. He's a clinical pharmacist specialized in uh, evidence-based pharmacotherapy, pharmaceutical care, epidemiology, and research methodology. His research interests include self-management of chronic diseases, pharmacist-led clinical interventions, patient-reported outcomes. He has successfully published five book chapters in CRC Press, Taylor and Francis Group, London and more than 20 uh, research articles in prestigious journals, including Lancet, Pharmacotherapy, Respirology, Journal of Asthma, Frontier of Pharmacology, and Frontier in Public Health. Dr. Suhail has received various highly prestigious research awards, uh, which a few uh, includes uh, European Research Society Young Investigator Award in 2018, International Society of Pharmacoeconomics and Outcome Research Travel Award in 2018, the International Institute of Knowledge Management Travel Award in 2018, Lung Foundation Malaysia Education and Travel Award in 2014, and then in 2017, Best Researcher Award in 2018, from Mahasa University, Gold Medal and Diamond Award 2013 in Intervention, Innovation and Design Expo, uh, Conference and Exhibition. Uh, then, last but not least, uh, Asian Pacific Conference and Exhibition 2013 Research Award uh, has also been conferred to uh, Dr. Sohail. So without a further ado, please welcome Dr. Sohail the floor is all yours, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali, for your kind introduction and agreeing to moderate the session. Mm -hmm. It is an absolute pleasure to be here. Welcome to all of you who have joined us online. First of all, it's a matter of great honor and satisfaction for me to share my thoughts on the topic of emerging roles of pharmacists in global health. I would like to thank the organizers Amhasa um, webinar series and providing me this opportunity to share my thought on the topic. Change. It is often in the wheels of change that we find our true destination. The only constant is change and change is inevitable in all walks of life. And the same is true when we talk about the pharmacist roles. In our ever-changing healthcare environment, Pharmacist roles will continue to evolve, providing the innovative solutions. The ever growing and complicated variety of medicines and non adherence to prescribed medicines have compelled the pharmacist position to evolve into more patient state, uh, patient centered strategy. So, with that, I'll share the contents of my presentation that I'm going to discuss today. I'll start my presentation by challenges of the global health. What are the reasons of changes in pharmacist roles, traditional versus emerging roles of pharmacists, patient care process, pharmaceutical care process, evolution of roles of the pharmacists, and lastly, the lesson learned from the evolution of pharmacy services in Malaysia. Global health. What we mean by global health is an area of study, research, and practice that places the priority on improving health and achieving equity in health for all people worldwide. So, from the definition, we can see it's a global phenomenon. Many developing countries are currently dealing with a huge burden of communicable as well as non communicable diseases, and we all have recently witnessed the burden in the healthcare system, the burden of COVID-19. The scope of work of pharmacists in diverse setting faces many challenges of global health. So what are these challenges? Let's have a look on these challenges. Newly emerging diseases, the classical example is COVID-19. We don't have any vaccination. We don't have any treatment to date. And we are hoping soon we get the vaccination or the treatment. Resistance to the existing drug, whenever we talk about the resistance, the classical example is 
the resistance to the antibiotics and it is emerging at a dramatic pace and in the near future it may pose a serious global health problem so optimal use of prescription medicines medication errors and adverse drug reactions non compliance abuse of recreational drugs medication supplies through unregistered online pharmacies with the advent with the advent of technology especially the information technology anyone who has the access to the internet have the access to buy even the prescription medicine without the prescription and without the consultation with the healthcare professional online advertising of prescription drugs distribution of substandard and spurious falsely labeled falsified or counterfeit medicines these are not the only challenges we are facing but at the moment these are the common challenges that we are facing the list is too big so here we just focus on the common challenges that we are facing at the moment and how we can address these challenges being the pharmacist and the active member of healthcare team how we can address these challenges so what are the ways this include health literacy management of acute and chronic diseases environmental care e health a relatively new phenomena and we can see a good scope in near future patient education and counseling traditional role but still carry the same value that it has in the past for micro vigilance pharmacist led interventions in vulnerable populations and when we talk when we say vulnerable populations it includes like geriatrics pediatrics pregnant women lactating mothers and so on so let's have a look on the common roles of the pharmacies starting first with the drug discovery discovery of new drug the drug development process pharmaceutical care where the pharmacist is involved in taking medication history identifying drug related drugs preventing potential drug related problems monitoring drug therapy patient counseling and education followed with community pharmacy where the pharmacist is involved in dispensing medicine maintaining patient records blood pressure and cholesterol liaising with doctor about prescriptions providing up to date information patient counseling and education and lastly public health promotion promoting health life healthy lifestyle improving nutritional habits managing health education and enhancing the quality of life of the general population when we say the evolution of roles the there is a change in the pharmacy roles so i have categorized three major reasons starting first on technology technologies have enabled more and treatment options as well as provided ways to coordinate care across healthcare provider and institution followed by changes in healthcare model consumers are calling for better access to cost effective convenient healthcare meet the demand by providing high quality and cost effective preventive screening immunization services moreover pharmacy have become a vital link for healthcare providing counseling medication therapy management and identify potential drug interactions and lastly now there is a more emphasis on patient centered care previously if you see the pharmacist role were confined more into product oriented services but now there is a paradigm shift in previous 20 30 years where it has become more patient centered and more patient focused affecting the patient care directly and helping the other healthcare professionals to maximize the use of medicine with minimum uh, chances of adverse consequences merging roles of pharmacies critical member of patient integrated healthcare team ranked among the top 3 most trusted profession according to gallup poll release in december 2013 so is quite satisfying that pharmacies from previous 11 consecutive years ranked in top 3 positions whenever we talk about the trusted professionals 
pharmacy is already part of the patients and other clinicians to improve care in medication therapy management medication reconciliation disease management and patient education today their role is changing at our avalanche pace and becoming more strategic all right so what are the emerging opportunities to play more strategic role whenever we say emerging opportunities are the emerging roles we use this term in uh, as a relative term there are certain developed countries where these roles are have already been assigned to the pharmacists and the pharmacists they are contributing their part in that specific area but in the developing countries we still are facing where the pharmacies is just standing behind the counter on the pharmacy and their roles start from the entrance of community pharmacy and at, ends at the entrance of community pharmacy they are not directly involved in the patient care so what are the emerging opportunities medication therapy management medication reconciliation medication care coordinators disease management follow up consultation after primary care visits and the hospital discharge patient engagement patient behavior coaching patient education and consultation member of chronic disease management team and creating local partnership for adherence and monitoring programs the last segment was perfectly addressed in the malaysian healthcare setting where they have medication therapy adherence clinic and the pharmacist is directly involved in promoting the medication adherence and then witnessing the positive outcomes in the patient especially those who are living with chronic diseases so in the upcoming slides i will discuss in detail what the medication therapy adherence clinic and what are the roles the pharmacist performing there how the pharmacist can expand their role the equation is very simple previously maybe two or three decades before the pharmacist was not directly involved in the as a healthcare team member so in, in the recent times especially in the developing countries pharmacist is a member of co committee of the healthcare team and actively participating in patient care by optimizing the patient management and contributing their part this brings me to patient care what do we mean by patient care and how the pharmacists can contribute in the patient care especially when we talk about the developing countries patient care is becoming more integrated and coordinated focusing on value and quality of care rather than volume of services provided to fulfill these pharmaceutical care responsibilities and attain goals of therapy so what are the goals appropriate effective safe convenient and cost cost effective medication to the patient the pharmacist must use a consistent systematic process to the patient Require to be part of the patient acute in the healthcare team. So we we'll see the patient knowledge and skills in patient care. Starting first, the form should have knowledge should have non-drug therapy. When we talk about non, it means the non-pharmacological changes like. chronic diseases they are the pharmacists may require to have the patient assessment skill special diagnostic testing this is a main skill that whether they should have a good discuss with the patients that we are facing in the communication when we talk about communication with the patient communication with the healthcare professionals so these require different set of skills patient monitoring skills drug information skills and therapeutic planning skills 
All right. So now we will see what is the patient care process. So the process starts first with the medication, then indication, effectiveness, safety, compliance, and then untreated indication. Viewers is not the communication with it also communication with sometimes information is subjective as well as objective. Assess information, develop patient care plan, implement care plan and intervention, and then work. By spearheading initiatives such as formulary development, medicine safety, pharmacovigilance, guidelines for medication counseling, provision of drug information service to health professionals and general public, pharmacists would be much appreciated as a key pillar in the healthcare architecture. So, besides that, the pharmacists can actively involve in public health programs especially when the pharmacist is serving at the community pharmacy. So the common one are needle exchange program, disease screening, pregnancy testing and counseling, immunization, counseling for at risk population, smoking cessation program and family planning program. So the major skill required in all disciplines of pharmacy uh, is communication skills so we will see what are the factors influencing the communication from the interviewer side and from the patient side and from the environment the influence of the environment also so in the interviewer side the internal factors previous experience attitude and values cultural heritage religious belief self-concept listening habits, preoccupations and feelings, and then the verbal expressions, language barrier, the use of jargon, choice of words, feedback and tone of voice, and then non-verbal expressions that involve body movement, facial expression, dress and professionalism, and then the interest in the communication process. There are certain environmental factors also there that may influence the communication that include light, noise, privacy, distance, and temperature. So if we see from the patient's perspective, what are the factors influencing the communication? So if we talk about the internal factors, this include previous experiences, attitude and values, cultural heritage, religious beliefs, self-concept, listening habit, preoccupations, and feeling. If you have witnessed that whether you are someone is patient or the healthcare giver the internal factors are exactly same and then there are sensory and emotional factors for example fear stress and anxiety pain mental equity brain damage hypoxia vision fading or speech impairment so these are the factors that directly influence the communication process and then based on this the success of communication communication process is decided another role is documentation a valuable communication tool for future encounter with that patient and with other healthcare professional is the documentation so it involves different levels of documentation and if someone is so we have different sets of Documents that are considered and different It's no more manual in most of the developed and in some developing countries. The documentation process has become electronic, it's no more manual. So, these are the contents of medical record, including. Admitting data, consent form, physician orders, flow sheets and graphic charts, progress notes, laboratory data, diagnostic procedures, operating reports, and physical condition.
the medication and then there are certain miscellaneous notes are also there okay, so the classical traditional model of cells, there is no communication between different healthcare providers no communication with the patient as well so the patient information remains fragmented and not shared between providers, pharmacists and insurers resulting in duplicate process and care individually prescribed medications may not align with the patient medical care plan so this was when the emerging roles were not introduced were not implemented and each member of the healthcare team they are working in silos only this is no more true when we talk about current times now we have collaboration integration and improvement to help the patient care plan with the patient coordinated care teams provide efficient and patient centered care models have are emerging in the form of consolidated and collaborative network and then there is the increased accountability. So each healthcare professional have a specific role, have a specific job to perform, and they are all have the same goal that to improve the patient care process, to optimize the patient care, to minimize any adverse event associated with. is medication therapy management services a comprehensive assessment of patient regulated needs and individualized care plan to determine desired goals of the therapy with the patient and appropriate follow-up to evaluate patients outcome that result from the care plan each medication is appropriate for medical conditions being treated the medication is being effective and achieving the goals established. The medication is safe for patient in terms of comorbidities. The patient is able to take medicine as intended. So these are the main responsibilities of the pharmacist who is providing his or her services using medication therapy management services. Let's have a look on the core elements of medication therapy management. Medication therapy reviews, intervention, or referrals. The journey starts, the process starts from the interviewing the patient and create database with the patient information. Review medication or indication, effectiveness, safety, and adherence. List medication related problems and then prioritize those problems and then create a plan. The typical example of the drug related problem. We, us we usually use the PCNE classification system that is pharmaceutical care network Europe that contains a whole list of the drug related problems with the specific codes. So if it is being implemented in the, in the patient care process, then it, it is the work to it is the work of the other healthcare professionals. And lastly, pharmacists need to create order to address drug related problems so based on that specific plan the pharmacist can directly give intervention to the patient and can give the intervention through collaboration collaboration between physician as well as the other healthcare professionals so once the plan is implemented we may need to create a personal medication called PMR Medication detection plan, I mean, documentation and follow up. So, all these key components we are going to discuss in our upcoming slide. These are the core elements of medication therapy management. Starting first, medication therapy review, personal medication record, medication related action plan, intervention and or referral, documentation, and lastly, follow up. So we will see one by one. MTI is a systemic, systematic process of collecting patient-specific information, assessing medication therapies to identify medication-related problems, to help a prioritized list of medication-related problems, and creating a plan to resolve. 
So after MGR, we have PMR, that is personal medication record, is a comprehensive record of the patient medication. That can be prescription medication as well as non-prescription medicines, including herbal products and other dietary supplements. Then we have medication related action plan. This is a patient centric document containing a list of actions for patient to use in tracking progress for self management. Okay. Beside uh, these emerging goals, for example, medication therapy management is already being implemented a few years before in US and in some developing countries. There is another newly emerging phenomena that is e-health or e-pharmacy. So this concept is going to revolutionize the provision of patient care. So we, we may have the electronic patient records, we may maintain electronic dispensing, including dispensing support in handling alerts, electronic communication with healthcare provider as well as with the patient. So it makes the communication process without the barriers, means barrierless, and then we are expecting that in near future, this is going to revolutionize the care process. So e-health or e-pharmacy, there are different names, there are different programs being implemented worldwide. In certain countries, it is being implemented by the name of telehealth, m-health, e-dispensing, e-prescribing, e-health, whatever the name is, it is covering similar sort of concept. Let's have a look on European Commission e-health action plan 2012 to 2020 means the current year. E-health is the use of ICT in health products, services and processes combined with organization change in health care systems and new skills in order to improve health of citizens, efficiency and productivity in healthcare delivery and the economic and social value of health. E-health covers the interaction between patient, healthcare service provider, institution to institution transmission of data and peer-to-peer -peer communication between patient and the health professionals. So what is the value of e-health or e-pharmacy? Why we need to adopt this concept? Why this is the way forward? So the answers are as following. With the help of e-health or e-pharmacy, we can address the eco-model that is economic, clinical, humanistic outcomes. It will reduce the cost. More efficient and more effective healthcare can become possible. Improvement of clinical benefits. Increase patient empowerment and satisfaction. So this can be done by supporting self-management and enabling the patient to take the responsibility. Based on my personal experience, if you engage the patient and then you give them proper support for the self-management, the patient is ready to take the ownership and then there are higher chances the patient will remain compliant to the treatment even if the patient have the comorbidities that the patient is using multiple medications also. So, what are the services can be offered with the help of e-pharmacy or e-health concept, e-prescribing, adherence services, services of new medications, locating a pharmacy, a pharmacy tracking, checking stock, online consultation, ordering an OTC online with consultation, monitoring the therapy, reminders, especially for those patients who are non-compliant and this non-compliance is is usually by the forgetfulness. So we can give a daily reminder. Management clinical reformation and entry point the health. So this is in immunization. Pharmacists can play an important role in disease prevention by advocating and administering immunization. 
So if some if the pharmacists want to get involved in the immunization process, there are certain prerequisites the pharmacist should have, especially in those countries where the pharmacist is authorized. In certain developing countries also, we can see a bright light on the other side. And I, I hope in near future, even in the developing countries, this is the role where pharmacies is going to be the major contributor. A vaccine administration program requires a solid infrastructure of appropriately trained staff, physical space, written policies and procedures to ensure appropriate vaccine storage and handling patient screening and education and documentation. So means if anyone want to provide the immunization services that specific individuals should have these necessary prerequisites and it should be allowed in that specific country also. Then the pharmacist should have the knowledge on storage and disposable, disposal of injection supplies, disposal of and prevention of exposure to biological hazards. So this can be ensured with the help of occupational safety and health administration and emergency procedure. Moreover, pharmacists should be fully immunized to protect their health and health of their parents, patients. Sorry. Next, the role of pharmacists in clinical trial. Pharmacists can work in a range of other roles in clinical research, working in phase one trial units as a trial coordinators and in the pharmaceutical industry. So here, in this specific capacity also the pharmacist can contribute to a greater extent. Pharmacists entering clinical research could start in any one of those areas, develop a role in that area and then move into another area or they could just stay one particular area and move towards the advanced soul. So it's up to the pharmacist. Either you want to stay in that specific area and get all the necessary skills required for that specific job scope or you want to move to another job scope and try to learn some new skills and try to contribute in different capacity also. So role of pharmacists in clinical trial, the pharmacists can be involved in reviewing the trial protocol, reviewing packaging and storage arrangements and advising patients on the correct use of drug being studies. Ensuring that clinical trial is managed in accordance with legislation and with the research governance framework, research ethics committee, assessing study design methodology, choice of drug and comparator, blinding, formulation and administration issues. So if we just see the role of the pharmacist in the spectrum of clinical trial, you can see a wide array of role. So starting from the protocol till the formulation and administration issue, the pharmacist can actively be involved in these specific roles that by, by, uh, by following these specific steps, the pharmacist can not only equip themselves with the new skills, but they can extend their contribution. So next we will have a look on Joint International Pharmaceutical Federation and World Health Organization guidelines on good pharmacy practice, standards of quality of pharmacy services. This uh, following this specific protocol and the rules, the there is a transition in the Malaysian healthcare setting that I'm going to discuss in my next slide. So the role one was prepare, obtain, store, secure, distribute administer, dispense and dispose of medical products, provide effective medication therapy management, maintain and improve professional performance, contribute to improve effectiveness of the healthcare system and public health. Just have a look on pharmacy services in Malaysia and then how these services have been revolutionized, what are the novel initiatives that were taking in the recent past and then how these initiatives make the transition of the pharmacist role. So first is ward rounds, part of medical team in assisting pharmacotherapy decision making. 
so the activities the pharmacist is involved in uh, ward rounds patient assessment pharmaceutical care plan bedside counseling and identify drug related problems so these activities the pharmacist involved by, by documenting certain using certain documents for example we have here in Malaysia different forms for the pharmacist who is providing his or her services inside the hospital these forms we call it cp1 form cp2 form 3 and 4 each form have different specifics and different roles involved for example clinical pharmacy one form is aimed for medication history assessment Clinical Pharmacy 2 is the pharmacotherapy review and this form is filled by the pharmacist where the pharmacist just keep all the necessary records for the patient and then can have a review on the pharmacotherapy. Then we have CP3 form, Clinical Pharmacy Report form and then we have one more form that is CP4 form and this form we use for the reference. Okay, the, one of the novel concepts that was introduced in early 2000 in Malaysia and that um, with the help of which the certain aspects of the patient care have improved manifold, especially when we talk about the chronic medication, the chronic management of the uh, management of the chronic diseases is medication therapy at various clinic here in Malaysia known as commonly known as MTAC. And this clinic is solely run by the clinical pharmacist. And it, MTAC clinic was initiated by Pharmaceutical Service Division, Ministry of Health in ambulatory setting. And the primary objectives were to optimize drug therapy, to improve medication adherence, and to reduce or prevent the occurrence of adverse events and complications due to drug regimen. In recent past, various studies have been conducted to have an idea about the impact of medication therapy at various clinic and the findings of those studies suggest that the, you, the concept of MTAC clinic was really helpful in improving the patient care, in improving the compliance of the treatment, in optimizing the drug therapy and reducing or preventing the occurrence of any adverse events or complications. At the moment, before 2040, there were 30 MTACs with established protocols. So for each MTAC, there is a specific protocol that a pharmacist who is involved in the MTAC has to follow. So before 2040, the 13 MTACs were focusing specifically on diabetes, warfarin, RVT, respiratory, nephrology that has certain subsections, chronic kidney disease, post renal transplant and dialysis, and then stroke, psychiatry, rheumatology, hemophilia, psoriasis, geriatric, and in 2014, they added a new MTAC that is on hepatitis. As I mentioned earlier, all these MTACs have a specific protocol and the pharmacist has to go into a certain level of training and then after achieving that specific standards the pharmacist can directly involve in the medication therapy adherence clinic. So the number of facilities offering MTAC services keep on increasing right from the start of the MTAC in 2004 where they in 2004 they, the Malaysian healthcare setting only have one MTAC service and now the facilities have been increased from 1 to 660 in total having 14 MTACs and each MTAC in each MTAC the pharmacist is actively engaging the patients actively providing the services and improving or optimizing the patient care. After the MTAC another phenomenon that's, that really proved to be helpful is home medication review also known as HMR is visits performed by the multidisciplinary team of healthcare professionals such as doctor, pharmacist, nurse, medical assistants and others to the patient's home. So means we are providing the delivery of the healthcare at the patient's doorstep. 
at the moment there are three type of areas that are being covered in the home education review they are the home education review for the patients who have the psychiatric disorders home education for the patients who have neurology or have stroke and then for the geriatric at the moment there are three major services are being offered and then the healthcare team assess the patient adherence towards their medication identifying any pharmaceutical care issue pertaining to patient's medication regimen and then empowering patients and caregivers knowledge on their disease followed by home medication review the next is harm reduction program methadone dispensing program is example of it to support the success of MOH methadone maintenance therapy program through direct observed therapy the harm reduction program is contributing towards the better patient related outcomes drug strong pharmacy patient relationship collaborate with physician and promote other healthcare providers to create seamless care and to achieve better retention time so these are the three major services offered patient verification and the process start first with the patient verification and assessment dose preparation and directly observed therapy next is drug surveillance national antibiotic usage Define daily doses twice a year. There are 26 types of drugs that are under this specific program, and then the services are being monitored at 43 facilities. Then national antiretroviral surgical profile axis audit, antibiotic point prevalence survey are the examples of the drug surveillance that are being offered here in Malaysia. Next are the quality initiative for main hospital each hospital have a crc center clinical research center that oversee the research related activities in that specific setting as preceptor of provisional register pharmacies research projects, involvement in clinical trials, involvement in quality assurance studies, another key initiative that was done in recent past was the availability of clinical trial sites arranged by Clinical Research Malaysia for that specific purpose. So how they are how the quality initiatives are being strengthened standardized and the quality is assured so there are different areas that were addressed starting first with the establishment of clinical work committees international partnership development of training module and teaching material established training centers appointment of dedicated preceptors development of guidelines and protocols and lastly the quality was the quality is used to be assured by clinical and the pharmacy practice audits so this is a example of the protocol of medication therapy adherence clinic if anyone of you interested and want to explore these skills even if you are not here in malaysia you are outside malaysia you can just google these documents and then you can find it from ministry of health malaysia website and it, it will enable you to learn the necessary skills that are being required for the MTech clinic. This is another example of the protocols of medication therapy adherence clinics for the MTech diabetes, MTech respiratory, MTech warfarin. As I mentioned earlier in the previous slides, in total there are 14 MTech and for each MTech there are specific protocols that the pharmacists need to follow. So moving towards the end of my today's talk, just have a look on the career pathways for the pharmacies. So pharmacy practice and management, clinical pharmacy, research, regulatory pharmacy and pharmacy enforcement. So based on your interest, you can you can follow any of these paths and these these uh, 
different paths provide you different required different set of skills that the pharmacies should have we are living in the age of specialization there is no more the term generalized ability that exists in today's dictionary same is true for the pharmacy also now we have board of pharmacy specialties pharmacotherapy ambulatory nuclear pharmacy oncology pharmacy psychiatry emergency medicine i'll just take the example of pharmacotherapy if someone want to register for uh, pharmacotherapy certification course they, they can just on the bps website that is board of pharmacy specialties and in that and specific specialties there is a subdomain of bcps and where there is a set of eligibility criteria that you need to maintain and after a certain level of preparation you can sit in the exam you are being given few case studies that you're supposed to answer and based on that if you are able to address all those uh, then you can get the bcps certification and the number is quite few so this is a blue ocean for the pharmacists maybe with certain level of preparation it's good if someone want to sit for the bcps certification exam and then we have antibiotic stewardship program so development of antibiotic antibiotic stewardship program protocol for the pharmacy is another specialty as i discussed earlier we are no more journalists we have to be specialists in our role. So if someone is involved in clinical pharmacy, are directly involved in giving patient care, the next step will be to have the specialty either in infectious diseases, nephrology, cardiology, oncology, critical care pharmacy. The list can be extended further also, which means these are not the only areas that you can get the specialties in. So, in conclusion, to succeed in the value-based healthcare system, pharmacists need to define what they offer to contribute to improve patient outcomes, lower medical costs, roles they want to play in patient care, determine what proactive steps to take to change the opportunity for a broader position in changing healthcare landscape as it evolves to meet the goals of optimal health care so the pharmacies can contribute to a next level with the help of the extended roles emerging roles futuristic roles you can name the term but the thing is if you want to perform well being the healthcare member you have to take the responsibility and for that specific responsibility you should have the necessities required then only you can contribute effectively and we can make sure safe, effective, efficient and cost effective treatment for our patients. With that, I will conclude my presentation with the quote of J.D. Hostel. If you want something in your life you have never had, you will have to do something you have never done before. So this is the time for the pharmacies to, for the paradigm shape and then can extend their specific roles also. These are the list of references that I have used for today's presentation. Thank you very much. And lastly, dare to dream, be better, explore more and be more. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your time. Amazing, Dr. Sahil. It was a wonderful presentation. Uh, even I'm a pharmacist, but there was a room for me to learn from your presentation also. It was very informative, very nicely delivered. The content was excellent. Now, uh, I will open the floor uh, for some questions. But before that, I have one question, sir. And that yes. is, and that is, sir, that um, in few countries, like underdeveloped countries, uh, the pharmacist role is still emerging. What do you think or predict in next 10 to 20 years? Will they be able to accept the role of pharmacist or will they take more time to understand that the pharmacist has the integral role in the healthcare system? Sir. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali, for the relevant question. 
I must say it depends on us whether we are ready to own the ownership, whether we are ready to take the responsibility mm. of being effective farmers, especially I'm talking about the developing countries. We have the example of Malaysia. They have implemented in 2004 medication therapy adherence clinic and there are dozens of studies showing that the patient care process has improved many folds. The reason mm. behind the initiative was taken by the government. The necessary skills required were offered by the healthcare institutes, higher learning institutes. The pharmacists are equipped with the basic skills required for those. They are being trained in that specific healthcare service under the supervision of someone maybe who has the, who got those specific skills from abroad and then implement in that specific healthcare setting. So direct answer to your question is yes but there is a condition for that we need to take the responsibility and there is a major contribution from our healthcare system whether our healthcare system is going to offer us the opportunity that enhance that can enhance our role and our participation being the active healthcare professional amazing uh, 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 that's amazing and, and i believe and and I believe being a pharmacist myself and after uh, listening to your conversation, definitely pharmacists can uh, play a very active role in the healthcare system, not only bringing the, 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 uh, uh, the incidences of uh, drug error uh, and the prescription error can bring down, but it can also bring down the burden of uh, healthcare system as well. Uh, uh, let me see if we have any more questions. Um, Okay, so with that, I'd like to conclude today's session. Thank you so much, Dr. Sahil. It was very informative uh, presentation from your side. And I must say that the viewers must have learned something new today. And that was uh, our definitely mission. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us. I hope we will see you again in our next eTalk series from Mahasa University. Thank you and have a nice day. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali. Thank you very much, all the individuals who have joined us.